Hello guys and welcome back to Planet 40k Space Marines. Now it's our first unit review for 10th edition with a full review because we've got the data sheet. Now unfortunately at the time of actually filming this we don't have the points cost as of yet. I'm filming this on the 14th of June. So by the time you do see this maybe the points have come out already and we'll know a little bit more in terms of how you know how how value how much of value these actual units are. But for today we're going without the points so we can do everything else within the data sheet. Now also a little side disclaimer if you like, of course there will be chapter supplements for the Space Marines in 10th edition. We will be doing those kind of videos in separate, in separate videos in fact, where we discuss the chapters specifically for units. But when we're doing the reviews we're pretty much going vanilla, we're going to go vanilla and we're not going to be talking too much about Blood Angels, Dark Angels etc. So without further ado, let's break into the video. So what are we going to be doing in the video? What are we actually reviewing? I've got a little list for you so that you can kind of use the, the timestamps below if you want to kind of skip ahead. So we're going to be going through the data sheet. We're going to be going through all the unit combinations that are going to work with your eliminators. We're going to be going through the index rules, which will be the faction rule and the detachment rule. We're going to be talking about any enhancements that can possibly relate to the unit in question. We're going to be then talking about stratagems that relate to the unit, their battlefield role and purpose, how to score with them and the best secondaries that we may be using, and finally the pros and cons for the unit. So we're going to go through all those subjects in this video, so it may be a long video, that's probably the style we're going to take at the very start of 10th edition at the very least. So let's get straight into the data sheet. Right, so we're going to start on the flip side of the data sheet card to begin. And we're going to go straight onto the right hand side which is the unit composition. You've got one Eliminator Sergeant and two Eliminators so you've got a three man team here. And every model is equipped with a bolt pistol, a bolt sniper rifle and a close combat weapon. So that's what you get as stock. We're then going to talk about the war gear options which we've got on the left side for you. So the Eliminator Sergeant's bolt sniper rifle can be replaced with one of the following. An instigator bolt carbine or a last fusil. We're going to get onto those when we talk about the weapons later on. All eliminators in the unit can have their bolt sniper rifle equipped, or replaced rather, with a last fusil. So you could actually replace all three of the models with the last fusils if you wanted to. There'll be benefits or pros and cons for both. Again, we'll discuss that in a moment. While we're on this page, we may as well look at the keywords at the very bottom. They're an infantry unit, of course, so they are going to interact slightly different with terrain and maybe with actions. They've also got the Grenades keyword, so that will interact with a stratagem from the core rulebook called Grenades. And they're a Phobos unit which could interact with things later on down the line. Right, let's flip the card and we're going to talk about everything on this. There's a lot of information here and we're going to break it down. We're also going to compare a little bit to 9th edition. Now I said this in the Tunis review we did recently. If you don't want me doing that, let me know in the comments down below. I can kind of cut that out of future videos. But for the very beginning, at least, I thought maybe we compare slightly to 9th edition because some units are going to play completely different to how they did in 9th. And if you're used to playing them in that way and not understanding the differences and the, the, the nerfs, I suppose, then you may still continue to play them in the, the wrong way, if you like. So I kind of wanted to show a few of those things and comparisons. Right, so let's begin with the stat line from the front side of the data card. Movement 6 inches, toughness 4. 3 plus armor save, 2 wounds, leadership 6 plus, and the object control is 1. So very bog standard space moon stats. I don't believe the ones from 9th edition have actually changed at all. So yeah, what you see there is pretty much as they were. Obviously the new one there is the leadership has slightly changed to a 2 dice and you have to get the what it says there or more. And object control is a new one, which yeah, it is what it is, right? 1, not a problem. So we're going to jump to, where should we jump to? Because I think it's easier to go to the weapons last. I know it's on the left side of the page. But let's go to the right side and the abilities to begin. So they've got the Infiltrator's ability, which means it's basically the same as Concealed Positions from 9th edition. So if you were aware what Concealed Positions was, you can pretty much deploy them on the battlefield more than 9 inches away from enemy units and the enemy deployment zone. And that's during the deployment step in the before the, the game actually begins. So not in turn two like deep strike and the reason why this was good is because let's say you put your unit down first and you put them in the center of the battlefield right in the dead center and if your opponent also has some sort of infiltrator units for example my necrons with the flayed ones i believe they've got the infiltrator keyword now the core rule now 
so they can also do the same thing that these guys can do. But bear in mind that you can't deploy them within 9 inches of enemy units. So now you've kind of taken away that entire circle of the centre of the battlefield, 9 inches around the entire unit, so your opponent can't do what you've just done. So you can do, you know, little bits of shenanigans, if you like, where you're screening off areas of the battlefield, or screening off objectives, or just key areas by just having infiltrator units. Now, am I suggesting the infiltrator ability is the best use of eliminators? Maybe, depends on what you're using them for, but they're likely going to be at the back sniping things out, or maybe on top of a ruin or something. But you've got it as your option there. The second core ability is Stealth, which is kind of like Camo Cloaks from 9th Edition. It's going to be a minus one to, to hit them at range. It's pretty good, it's pretty good. I'm not, I'm not unhappy with that at all. Oath of Moment is the faction ability. We'll go through that later on in the video when we talk about the index rules. Then as for their unique roles, they've got two. So reposition under covering fire. In your shooting phase, after this unit has shot, if it contains an eliminator sergeant equipped with the instigator bolt carbine, remember that was an option for the sergeant, this unit can then make a normal move, and if it does, until the end of the turn, this unit is not eligible to declare a charge. Now you don't want to be charging with these guys anyway, that's not their game, so that isn't a problem. But what you can do is you can shoot, then get yourself into terrain, or shoot, get yourself onto an objective. But the most important part is the fact that you can pretty much not do the movement in your movement phase, so you're going to get buffs to your weapons. Again, we'll talk about that in a moment. The second ability, mark the target. So each time this unit remains stationary, that's what I was kind of just talking about, until the start of your next movement phase, ranged weapons are equipped with the Devastating Wounds ability. Nice. So when you roll a 6 to, to wound, instead of your opponent making a, an armor save or an invulnerable save, you just do straight up mortal wounds for the amount of damage the weapon actually has, and in this case it could be 3. So it's 3 mortal wounds instantly with a 6 to wound. That's if you remain stationary. Of course, if you're moving, you're not getting the devastating wounds ability, which is why the previous ability is actually quite good, because if you want to move, you can't really move without messing up your devastating wounds ability, but you can do it after firing with that other ability, reposition under covering fire. That's why that's a really good ability. So yeah, both of them combined are pretty decent. But yeah, the Devastating Wounds ability is a little bit like the, the Mortis Rounds in 9th edition for the, the snipers. And as you're going to see in a moment, the snipers are all just one bolt sniper rifle. There's no three options now like we had in 9th edition. Right, let's get into the weapons then because we kind of need to. That's the main focus of this data sheet. They've got the bolt pistol, straightforward pistol, 12 inch range. 3 plus, uh, three plus ballistic skill, strength 4, no AP, 1 damage, we don't really need to say too much about them, they can fire into combat, big deal, whatever, right, that's not what they're about. The bolt sniper rifle is what they're about, so first of all, it's got the heavy keyword, so that means if they remain stationary, it's a plus 1 to the hit roll. Now, in 9th edition, they used to hit on a 2 plus anyway, with ballistic skill 2, they now hit on 3s, but if they stay stationary, it's back to 2s, so not a big deal, and going back to the abilities again, you can remain stationary and get the Devastating Wounds ability, and then shoot and then move later on. So yeah, it all kind of comes full circle with that. It's also got the Precision ability, so you can snipe out character models that are within units, so leaders that are within bodyguard attached units. You can put your focus directly onto those characters if you wished. Now, the range of this weapon is 36 inch range, so pretty good scope there. One attack per model, you've only got three if you're taking the bolt sniper rifles. Bliss skill 3+, plus, potentially a 2+, plus if you stay stationary. Strength 5, yeah, against toughness 4 or less, you're wounding on a 3+. Plus. Tougher ones, such as toughness 5, is a 4+, plus and etc. It's not too bad, I think it's okay. AP is minus 2, I think that's okay as well, but the damage is 3, which is also pretty good, I think. So, if you've got that Devastating Wounds ability, as mentioned, you roll a 6 to wound, straight 3 more wounds, job done. All on a character as well. So I like that weapon of course. Now the instigator bolt carbine which was one of the options for the sergeant. This is what it does. So it's got the precision ability again so you can target characters. It has lost the assault keyword so you're not, you're not advancing and then still firing it. But you weren't doing that anyway. Who cares? I mean you weren't going to be advancing with the other guys with the sniper. So not a big deal at all. It's only 24 inch range though. So you're not going to be matching that 36 inch range with the snipers. Blitz skill 3+. And it's not got the heavy keyword this time, so it will be a 3+. Plus. 
Strength 4, minus 2 AP, which is a buff because it used to be minus 1. And the damage is 3, and that's also a buff. It used to be 2. So it has increased in terms of the AP and damage. Lost the assault keyword, who cares? And bear in mind, when you've got this weapon, you can use that reposition under covering fire ability to actually get your movement. So that's why you would take it, even though it's, it's a worse weapon than the actual sniper rifle, it gives you that movement after you've actually shot. So that's the first sort of lot of combinations, if you like. The second one is the last fusel. Now, if you're going to take these, you may as well take them on all three of the models in the unit. There's no reason to not. If you go in sniper hunting, you may as well take all snipers. And if you're not, you're not. So last fusels, they are heavy. So again, the plus one to the hit roll if you do remain stationary. Good. And 36 inch range, so it matches the sniper rifles. The strength used to be strength eight. It's now strength nine. And that's good because... The toughness of vehicles and monsters has gone up and you need to, it's not gone up enough, but it's gone up a reasonable amount, I suppose. If you're going up to strength 9, you're probably still wounded on a 5 plus, if I'm honest with you, because a lot of these monsters and vehicles are sort of toughness 10, toughness 11, toughness 12. The big stuff are like toughness 14 anyway. So you are going to have less strength than their toughness, but you're not going to be, you know, half the amount of strength versus toughness. So you're likely wounded on a 5 plus anyway. Minus 3 AP, and the damage used to be 3, it's now D6, so it's a little bit janky on the damage front. But if you've got 3 of these, it could be okay. Now, of course, this hasn't got the precision ability on the weapon, so you're not going to be, you know, you're not going to be hunting out characters. I personally don't really rate the weapon. I think you've got other units in the, in the index that can do this job better. I'd rather use eliminators for the snipers, but hey. So yeah, you've lost the 3 options with the snipers. But the main, the main thing of note here is you can either take three snipers or two snipers with the insta instigator bolt cannon, bolt cannon, bolt carbine to give you that extra movement which you don't want to be doing in your movement phase because it messes up your devastating wounds as well as a plus one to the hit roll. Deep breath. Right, that's the data sheet covered. Let's move on. So we're going to talk about unit combos next. I've got a few combinations for you. The first one is the captain in Phobos armor for a few reasons. So if you're... Captain and Phobos Armor joins the Eliminator unit because he can, because he's got the that leader keyword and he can go into those units. Once per battle round, one unit from your own with this ability can be targeted by a stratagem for zero command points. Even if that stratagem has already been targeted, even if that stratagem has been targeted, that's not what I meant at all. Even if another unit from the army has already been targeted by that stratagem, this phase. So it could be one of the Space Marine stratagems, it could be one of the Core Rule stratagems, it could be the, the CP reroll, the, the CP reroll, the Command reroll stratagem. Just a simple reroll to a hit roll or a wound roll. You can reroll that again. It doesn't cost you any command points if you've got a Captain in Phobos armor in the unit. Not a bad option. The second ability that this guy has is the Master of Deceit. So after both players have deployed their armies and determining, determine who has gone first, if your army includes one or more models with this ability. You can select up to three friendly Adeptus Astartes Phobos units. There are scout units as well, but Phobos units are the ones we're focusing on and they had the focus, they had the focus, they had the Phobos keyword. So therefore this is applicable to that unit. So you can effectively redeploy those units and when doing so, any of these units can be placed into strategic reserves, regardless of how many units there are in strategic reserves. Now, what this could help you with is little shenanigans such as you put your eliminators in the center of the battlefield like i said earlier in the video in the no man's land or maybe in a screening area to stop your opponent from also doing infiltrations in that key area of the battlefield and then once you've kind of made them deploy all their units or their infiltrator units at the very least you can then reposition your eliminators and put them somewhere that you actually want them to go on top of a ruin behind, you know, in the deep into your deployment zone perhaps because they've got 36 inch range. So that's something you can do. You can also bait them out if you're putting that unit at the very front, along with other Phobos units as well, I suppose, your opponent may think, ah, I'm going to get a, you know, I'm going to do a movement, I'm going to do an advance roll, I'm going to do a charge roll because I can do that. I'm, I'm Orcs, for example, I can do all that stuff. And then I'm going to slingshot into your army and then you just use this ability and go, nope, I'm going to pick up those three units and move them somewhere else in my deployment zone. Ah, your deployment now is wrecked. So that's what the the benefits of having a Captain in Phobos armor are for your eliminators. The second option I've got is the Librarian in Phobos armor. 
So another Phobos character here. He's got the Psychic Hood. So when he leads a unit, the unit has a 4 plus Furno Pain save against Psychic Attacks. That's not too bad. That's okay. There's going to be a lot of Psychic Attacks in the game. Not against my Necrons because we don't do Psychic stuff. But against a lot of other factions, they do. And then they've also got this Shrouding ability, which is a Psychic ability. So while this Librarian is dealing with the unit, your unit's going to have the Stealth ability, which it already has. Ignore that part, kind of. And also the unit cannot be targeted by ranged attacks unless the attacking model is within 12 inches. So kind of similar to giving them lone operative in a way. But if they've got 36 inch range and they're firing out and your opponent can't fire back in unless they're 12 inches in within that unit, that's pretty decent. That's pretty decent. I mean even elimination, elim eliminators versus eliminators, they can't fire back. So there are keys and there are definitely probes to having this librarian in Phobos armor in that unit. In fact, that is the last character I've got in terms of synergy. There are probably a lot more, but they're the two that I wanted to identify in this video. So let's move on to the index rules. And of course, we've got the army rule of Oath of Moment. So the Oath of Moment is where you're re-rolling all your hit rolls and all your wound rolls against a specific unit that you have targeted in your command phase. Now, are you going to be selecting this purely based on what your eliminators want to target? Probably not, you're probably going to be looking at your anti-tank stuff on the first the first few rounds at the very least, or the, the big bads that your opponent has. Yes, characters are big bads in some cases, but sometimes you can't get to them, and with three models in a unit, even if you are re-rolling everything, it might not do enough. So you probably wouldn't waste it on them, but you do have the option if you really want to get rid of a character that's, you know, toughest five or less maybe, yeah, maybe go for O for a moment. The detachment rule for the Gladius Task Force, of course, is Combat Doctrines. And from the Combat Doctrines, out of the three of them, I quite like the look of the Tactical Doctrine, which gives the unit the eligibility to shoot and declare a charge in the turn in which it fell back. Now, this is only really useful if they got they get caught in engagement range, because once you're in engagement range, you're not firing the weapons anymore. And that's the whole point of these guys. If you're not firing, they're done. They're not going to be doing that much in terms of melee. So you want to fall back, but if you fall back, you can't shoot unless you've got the Tactical Doctrine, which allows you to shoot in a turn in which you fell back. This will allow for other units to then start shooting into that unit that's charged you, and maybe you can escape and then on the next turn start firing as normal, well on that turn in fact, firing as normal to other units that you want to actually target. Right, so that is the, what was that, that was the Index Rules, we're now on the Enhancements. Now of course this is a unit that can't take Enhancements, they're not characters, but if you had a character that was leading the unit, such as that Librarian in Phobos Armor or the Captain in Phobos Armor, they could take the Bolter Discipline Enhancement, which would give the Bearer that leads the unit, or it would give the unit the Sustained Hits 1 ability. And if they're under the effects of the Devastator Doctrine, then successful unmodified hit rolls of a 5 plus will score a critical hit. Now, why that could be good is. A 5 plus to hit all of a sudden in the Devastator Doctrine would give you an additional hit and if you've only got 3 shots to actually start the, the start off with against the character because you've only got 3 models with the sniper rifles, potentially you're going to all of a sudden have 4, maybe 5, I mean, it depends on your hit roll I suppose. I mean you could get super lucky and get 3 5 plus rolls and I mean if you roll like I do you won't but if you roll like some others do, yeah, you can get 3 5 plus rolls and all of a sudden you could have 6 hits against a character in a unit all because of the sustained hits ability and the devastated doctrine so it's a little combination, I mean I'm not saying it's the most the, you know, the best use of that enhancement but it is something if we're talking about eliminators stratagems next, we've got how many have I got for you, I've got a couple because they don't give you that many stratagems now per, well, per detachment I give you six and now of the six I've got two that are sort of worth mentioning here the first one is storm of fire and in your shooting phase you can basically ignore cover and if you're in the devastated doctrine it's an extra AP so it'll go to minus three AP with sniper rifles and you're ignoring cover yeah it's okay it's one CP if you want to use it go ahead not a problem and the other one is squad tactics which is going to be done in your opponent's movement phase just after your enemy unit has made a normal move, or ends a normal move, advanced move, or fall back move, one of our infantry units, such as the Eliminators, can make a normal move up to D6. And if it's a tactical doctrine, it's just a straight six. And this is good because 
First of all, you can use this as added movement because if you remember from the abilities, you don't want to be moving the unit in the movement phase because you mess up your heavy weapon in terms of getting the bliss skill, you know, two plus, hitting on a two plus. And also, you don't want to be messing up the devastating wounds ability if you've got that off. So, you have to find other ways to move the unit. One of them was because of the what we said earlier, you can shoot and then move. But this is another way. You can move with squad tactics if your opponent is within 9 inches. And it's only one command point. Also, it's going to be useful if your opponent is lining up a charge. Let's say they're 9 inches away. And they're going to go for that charge move so they only need 8 inches to get within engagement range. You pop the stratagem. And then you're moving D6 away, potentially 6 inches away. That's going to make their charge a lot, difficult, a lot more difficult. So get you out of dodge and yeah you you kind of want to be firing with these guys you don't want to be caught in engagement range on to the battlefield role so what is the battlefield role for these guys i mean it's quite clear they're snipers if you're going full snipers then you're going to sit in the greatest firing lane now even if you can't actually see characters if you've got the biggest firing lane then your opponent is very unlikely to want to step out into that firing lane with a character so it's going to prevent a lot of movement from your opponent's army, especially with those character models. And also, as mentioned earlier, if you're making use of that infiltrate ability, your opponent isn't going to be setting up 9 inches away from enemy models, so you can use them to that effect as well. And then, of course, if you've got that Phobos captain in the unit, you can just move them back later on. But yeah, mainly, it's about the snipers. If you're going with the last few saws, I wouldn't, but if you are, they're anti-vehicles, anti-monsters. A little bit janky with the D6 damage. But yeah, I think there's just better options, so I just wouldn't advise it. Moving on to scoring. Now, in 9th edition, they were quite cheap in terms of unit. And they were used as a cheap scoring unit because they had the infantry keyword. Maybe they've still got that cheapness to the data sheet, so therefore you can still use them for that ability. But now there may be better options in the index. Once I've gone through the index a little bit more thoroughly with every single data sheet, I'll probably have to tell you more about that. But I just remember from 9th edition, they were one of those units that you could use just to score cheap points, do cheap actions within infantry models. But the main thing is, because you're doing assassin, you're doing, what are you doing? You're assassinating characters. So therefore, assassination is an obvious one there with the secondaries. And if you are taking the last few swords, maybe something like bring it down. But mainly it's assassination or just doing cheap actions, doing cheap, cheap methods of scoring points, taking and holding from your own deployment zone perhaps. That's the only real ways I can think of to score with these guys. Right, before concluding the video, we've got the, the summary, I suppose, the pros and cons to having the eliminators in your army list. So the pros to begin, they've got the infiltrators keyword, which is going to be good for a number of reasons. You can put them where you want. You can screen off enemy units, bloody, bloody, blah, blah. We've already spoke about that. They've got the stealth ability. That's going to be a minus one to hit them. And you can obviously make that even more tricky with that librarian in, in Phobos armor with that psychic ability he has. They've got heavy weapons for the plus one to hit if they remain stationary, which they should be really, especially if they're on top of a terrain feature or something, they won't need to move that often anyway. And they've got the precision ability, which is the main focus of why you would take these guys to snipe out characters. They've got the last few souls as an option. It's an option, right? It's an option. And the instigator bolt carbine will add to your movement if you put that on the sergeant. I need to sort of try and error that one. I need to try it out. Will it be better to have three snipers or would it be better to have the sergeant with the actual bolt carbine to give us the extra movement? I don't know. I need to kind of test that one out. And finally, they can be used as a cheap scoring unit, which we mentioned in the scoring section. As for the cons, I've only got a couple for you. The other snipe options or, sni you know, the sniper profiles that they had in 9th edition, they're all gone. You had the mortise rounds and all that kind of stuff before. And you got to select which profile you use before you used it. That's all gone. Although I don't really see that as a con because the damage is just a flat three and the AP is still there. I think it's okay, it's just the number of shots is one. And the last one is they're offering nothing in melee. You don't want them in engagement range. If they are in engagement range and you're not falling back, they're pretty much done. And yeah, just you may as well just forget about them, they're done. So guys, this is the part of the video where I usually do the Planet 40k rating. If you guys aren't aware what the Planet 40k rating is, it's a rating out of five which we were doing in 9th edition, and 0.5s are a thing. And I can't remember what I gave these guys in the last edition, to be honest with you, but I'm not going to be doing the ratings just yet. I think it's just way too early into 10th edition. And, well, we're not even in 10th edition at the time of me recording this, so 
having absolutely zero games like the most of like most of us we haven't actually played a game so once I start playing the games want to start trialing out these things with different chapters as well of course I'll have a bit more of a of a rating for you and I'll come back to this video and I'll kind of look at it again and go what rating would this unit have but if you could kindly put in the comments down below what rating you would give them out of five so that when I do come back I can actually maybe do a tier list or something with all the units in the Space Marine Index. So guys remember to like and subscribe on your exits. Thank you all for watching. I'll see ya in the next one.